Okay, I'm gonna talk about solving quadratics by graphing or factoring. So I think better it's better to do it by factoring, but I'll do graphing as well. So if I give you a function rule that looks like this, the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to figure out what the vertex is. So remember your vertex is negative b over 2a, comma the function rule when you plug in negative b over 2a. So I'm gonna do that, negative b is negative two, a is one, so that gives me negative two over two, or negative one. Now I'm gonna plug that back into the equation. When I plug it back into the equation, it gives me negative four. So negative one, negative four. I'm just gonna put that on a graph as my vertex. So negative one, negative four. Now because a value is one, when I go over one, I go up one. When I go over one, I go up one. From the vertex, when I go over two, I go up four. When I go over two, I go up four. Negative one, negative, this one should have been right there. So my quadratic looks something like this. And what we're looking for is we're actually looking for the x-intercepts. Those are our solutions, when, x equal, when y equals zero. So we're trying to find these two points, which this one is one, and this one's negative three. So my solutions are x equals one or negative three. If I wanted to write it as a set, I would say x belongs to the rules that x equals one or negative three, close it up. Or roster notation is probably better. Roster notation says one, negative three. That's everything in the set. And that's it, okay? So pretty simple there. I'll do another example. If I give you a function rule that looks like First thing we gotta do is we gotta find the vertex. So the vertex here is going to be negative b, which is five, over two times a, which is one, which is five over two. It's not really as good to do when it's a fraction, but we're still gonna do it. So that squared is gonna be 25 over four, minus 25 over two, negative 25 over four, minus six, which is negative 24 over four, negative 29 over four. So my vertex is five over two, comma, negative 29 over four. So make my graph. Vertex of five over two, which is two and a half, negative 29 over four, which is negative Seven and a half and a quarter. This is why I don't like to do the graphing because now it's gonna get tricky. I know that when I go up one, I go over one. When I go up one, I go over one. When I go uh, over two, I go up four. Over two, up four over three up nine, over three up nine, but it's really hard to tell where the point where it actually crosses the x-axis is. On this one, it looks like it's at one, two, three, four, five, comma, negative one. And, and that could be right, I don't know. But, so for this one, I'm gonna say that the answer is five, zero, negative one, zero. But it's really hard to tell on the graphs. That's why I'm, I don't like doing it that much. So I'm going to say that it, it, it has the, rule, the solutions of negative 1, 5. And that's it. Okay? Now, from factoring, I think factoring is a little bit better. We're going to do it slightly different. So what I want you to do on factoring, and we're going to use this exact same example. The, what I want you to do is, uh, it's called a four square method. We're gonna make four squares. In the first square goes our first term. In the last square goes our last term. 
We multiply these two together. I have to find two things that multiply together to this and add together to this. Since this is x squared and this is x, each one is going to have an x. Now I need to multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. I could list them all out. 6 times negative 1, 3 times negative 2, 2 times negative 3, 1 times negative 6. I'm going to see which ones add together to negative 5x. This gives me positive 5x, so that doesn't work. This gives me positive x, so that doesn't work. This gives me negative x, so that doesn't work. And this gives me negative 5x. So these are the two that I want to use. So in here I'm going to put 1x and negative 6x. It doesn't matter which one goes in which place. Now what I want you to do is we're going to say, what can I factor out of both of these going up? So what we can factor out of both of these is a 6. Because this is negative, this is negative. Then I want to look at it. And I want to say, what can I factor out of both of these? And I can factor out an x. Because this is positive, this is positive. Then I want to go this way and say, what can I factor out of both of these? And it's an x. Because this is positive, this is positive. And what can I factor out of both of these? This is a 1. Because this is positive, this is positive. So my two factors are going to be these guys x plus 1, and these guys, x minus 6. Now since we're trying to solve, we're going to set both of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So I get x equals negative 1, and x equals 6, which are the same answers, well, pretty dang close to the same answers that I got on this other one. I was just barely off. So the graph was okay, but it did give me 5 instead of 6, so it's better to factor it out. I'll do another example of these guys. I'll look for one where there's a value, an A value, so that we can actually uh, have a harder time. So I'm going to set it up. First thing I'm going to do, first value goes in here, last value goes in here. Multiply these together. It has to add to an x, so it's going to be x and x. I want two numbers that multiply together to negative 20 and add to positive 1, which is going to be 5 and negative 4. Those are what go in here. And you, of course, don't have to do this if you can do it on your own. Much easier. So I'm going to say, what can I factor out of this, which is a 2. Since this is negative, this is negative. What can I factor out of this? which is an x. This is positive, this is positive. What can I factor out of here? Is a 2x. This is positive, this is positive. What can I factor out of here? Is a 5. This is positive, so this is positive. My two factors are going to be 2x plus 5 and x minus 2. Now I'm going to set both of those equal to 0 and solve. And those are my two solutions. Fairly simple. Now there are some that are special cases. So there's a rule for special cases that we can kind of jump right out um, to that point and not have to go through the process. The first special case is the uh, difference of two squares. Difference means subtraction, two squares means that it's the same number, or it's the same value times itself. So if I have f of x equals x squared minus 9, this is a square, this is a square, and this is subtraction. So the rule for that is, well, I'm just going to write it like this. Well, I'm going to write it like this. a squared minus b squared becomes a plus b, a minus b. So for this value, what is being squared here? The x. 
So it's going to be x plus x minus. What's being squared here is the 3, so it's 3 and 3. So this, f of x equals, and since I'm trying to solve it, I would set both of these equal to 0 and solve. Those are my two solutions. Now, they can get a little bit trickier if they do something like this. It's still the difference of two squares. What times itself gives me this? 4x squared. What times itself gives me this? 9. So plus 9, 4x squared, minus 9. Now I have to go an extra step. Because this is still the difference of two squares. So this isn't going to change, change because it says plus. But this one is. It's going to become 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Now I set them both equal to 0, or all three of them actually. 4x squared plus 9 equals 0, minus 9, minus 9. 4x squared equals negative 9, divide by 4, divide by 4, x squared equals negative 9 over 4. When I try to square root both sides, it gives me an error. So these are imaginary numbers. We'll get to those later, but not yet. 2x plus 3 equals 0, minus 3, minus 3, 2x equals negative 3, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals negative 3 over 2. 2x minus 3 equals 0, plus 3, plus 3, 2x equals 3, divided by 2, divided by 2, x equals 3 over 2. This gives me a solution, this doesn't, this does, so I get those two solutions. Hopefully that makes sense. We also have perfect square trinomials. Perfect square trinomials are these two examples. If it gives me a squared minus 2 times a times b plus b squared, then I'm going to turn it into a minus b squared. So what that would look like is x squared minus 6x plus 9. My b is 3. 3 times x times 2 is 6. Or sorry, is 6x. So that's where, where that looks like. So this would be x minus 3 squared. There's also when you have addition, it's just going to be like that. So this would be like x squared plus 6x plus 9 becomes x plus 3 squared. And uh, this video is already kind of long, so I hope that wasn't too bad. I apologize.